Prior to Algorand, she worked with several global technology enterprises and startups that included Avoid, Sprint, ZMags, and Res1. Her roles have included the management of, of channel sales and marketing, developing marketing strategies and tactical execution plans to drive business awareness and growth, building a go-to market, positioning and strategy, and leading cross-functional teams. Please let's welcome to the podium Kelly Callahan and her talk, the head of marketing at Algorand, and her talk, Meet Modern Tech, Sustainable Blockchain. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I, thank you for the introduction. That was very nice. I actually am going to sit down and have a chat with uh, my friend Saif, who uh, likes to call himself the master connector here in Miami. He's very good at bringing everyone in this amazing, vibrant community together from tech, startup, sustainability. Uh, he knows anyone and everyone that passes through. And so we are really happy to sit down with Saif. Thanks, Kelly. But um, this is a chat with you. And we're all excited to have you, one of the leading figures at Algorand. And I guess I'll start off. Uh, we heard uh, an introduction of you, which I think would make your mom very proud. Sure. Uh, and, you know, I, you know, for all of us here. But um, I know that uh, we actually uh, don't have with us here today Dr. Silvio McCalley. So, uh, yeah, yeah, Silvio uh, had a personal emergency and couldn't make it down to Miami this weekend, sends his regrets. And it's really too bad. And, and we should, you and I can both think, sing Silvio's praises because I know he doesn't usually do it. Uh, but Silvio is really... Uh, instrumental in environmental and sustainability technology. Uh, to take a step back, Silvio has been doing cryptography and blockchain since the early 80s, and I like to refer to him as the modern day godfather of cryptography as we know it. He's invented or co-invented uh, zero knowledge proofs, uh, cryptographic sortition, a number of complex cryptographic uh, technologies that really define what blockchain is as we know it today. And they're the underpinnings of any of the protocols that anyone's ever touched with. So, you know, and he's been talking about sustainability and the environmental impact of blockchain, which, you know, we should get into a little bit, uh, for a long time, for years, well before it was really critical to how we thought about moving forward on modern tech. Well, we send our thoughts to Dr. McCallie and his family, but we're really grateful to have you holding it down for Algorand, okay. one of the top leaders. And Today is Earth Day, uh, and that's a big deal, we know, especially because we're here at, at Premios Verde. How about we applaud, let's applaud Mother Earth. I'm Earth Indian. Day. Happy Earth Day. And, you know, for, uh, in, in my tradition, Mother Earth is everything. It's embodied by the Ganges River, which we call Ganga Mai, uh, which is the Mother Earth uh, of it all. And Algorand, uh, you all have been celebrating Earth Day in a big way. You have a, a really special uh, celebration and appreciation for Earth Day, especially as the world's greenest blockchain. What yeah. have you guys been up to? We love Earth Day. We love Earth Day. You know, it, we like, the thing is, some of the earlier blockchain protocols, Bitcoin, Ethereum, they were super innovative for their time. And this is one of those things going back to Silvio. Silvio saw this stuff coming out early on and said these are amazing and can do amazing things, but they're inherently flawed. They can't scale. They use too much energy. They're not inclusive. They're not easy to build on. They're not, uh, they're not uh, cost effective enough for global use. Like they can't, mass adoption won't happen on these types of technology. And so when he thought about that, solving for all of those problems, one of the other things was energy consumption. And so if you look at the Algorand network, it's, it's, you know, I'm sure we've had a bunch of blockchain uh, talks here today, like the difference between proof of work and proof of stake. Silvio was really the first person to come out with a pure proof of stake blockchain. And not only that, the nodes that, that make Algorand possible require minimal energy. You can run a node on Algorand on a Raspberry Pi, like one of those $12 computers that yeah. you can fit in the palm of your hand. Um, it runs like a AA battery, you can run that thing. You can run a node on that. And so I think that's... Uh, that's a symbol of how he wanted it to be inclusive and he wanted it to be low energy. 
And we really like celebrating Earth Day. You know, we were the first ones to come out and partner with Climate Trade. You heard from Fran earlier uh, to make Algorand carbon negative. So if you follow it all the way across the board, so those nodes I'm talking about, they require a small footprint. They require a small amount of energy. We're not taking up massive amounts of servers to solve big, huge cryptographic puzzles. It's nodes, it's a consensus lottery mechanism, very low energy usage. Uh, you take that, we also have um, really low transaction fees. And so, and then that amounts to uh, energy, let me follow this through one more time. It amounts to the, uh, we have a smart contract that takes those, uh, the energy footprint of the nodes and it offsets it by purchasing carbon credits on chain through climate trade, which you heard about earlier. And just this week, the foundation announced that the transaction fees that the network generates are going to be used to purchase those carbon credits. So it all flows through creating a really sustainable network that, you know, you could apply the same model if the numbers were really high, really high energy usage, really high transaction fees. We're going to buy more trees to offset all those things. But with Algorand, you're low, low, low across the board. You've got low energy costs for the nodes. You've got low transaction fees, which is one of the reasons why people are using Algorand. And then you're buying fewer trees, but you're also just creating a sustainable model that's low impact all the way around. It's really exciting, to, uh, especially when we consider that sometimes the conversation when, we, when blockchain technologies is presented, we think about this binary choice or false binary between uh, doing right by Mother Earth and then advancing the power of the decentralized web. Um, before we get into that a little bit more, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I love the fact that Algorand did something really magical to celebrate Earth Day. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I don't know if there's any possibility they can share the image of it, but you have to share with our friends who might have missed out yeah. on the big celebration that you all right. did. Right, so we like to go big. So I think uh, a couple years ago, we were the first ones to say we're gonna go carbon negative by offsetting the entire footprint of the network. So not just the existing nodes, but like 100 nodes out, so that we're actually offsetting more than the network consumes. Uh, this year, yesterday, last night, for one hour, we darkened Times Square. And it was really, really exciting because our entire community came out to celebrate this. Our partners, fans, we work with great people in our community, uh, the city of New York. And what that, the parallels we were drawing there was that one hour, Times Square is pretty progressive. They don't, you know, they're very, you know, it's a reasonable amount of energy for very high impact, the center of the arts with the, the theater district, the center of the financial district in, in New York. Low energy, high impact. Drawing a parallel to that one hour of the darkening of Times Square could also take the same amount of energy and you could do 350 million transactions on Algorand in comparison to six transactions on Bitcoin that were finalized. And so people were really able to understand in a visual way like how massive that is. It's the same, like it's a numbers game, right? So one hour of Times Square, 350 million transactions on Algorand or six transactions on Bitcoin. 90 hours worth of uptime versus 1.5 seconds versus of uptime on Bitcoin. And if you look at the comparison to the traditional financial system, uh, you've got someone like Swift. To process that many transactions would take Swift, that's like a month and a half of them running versus it's about 90 hours. So you're talking many, many weeks, 90 hours, hundreds of millions of transactions versus six. And the, you know, we really want to change public perception and the narrative that blockchain is bad for the environment. You know, we should get into a conversation about how blockchain can disrupt almost any of the industries that are sitting in this room. And the, you know, anytime there's an exchange of value, you can use Bitcoin and, and do, I'm sorry, you can use blockchain and do things better. But when you look at the, um, when you look at the impact of Times Square, like we, that was, hugely successful. A lot of people are talking about that because they can put uh, the, the visuals with the numbers and, and sort of see it's, the impact. It's so exceptional, especially when you think about those numbers uh, that a L1 blockchain technology platform like Algorand would be so intentional uh, in, in making not what's a PR stunt, but something that's actually illustrating for the next generation that we can absolutely do better. We can leverage and harness the power of blockchain technologies, drive the common good, 
and create democratizing opportunities. And Kelly, you mentioned something, and uh, there are so many great examples. And, and I know a lot of our friends who are here at Premios Verde are social impact leaders. They're working on big, complex problem sets that are connected to the United Nations SDGs. Folks like my friend uh, Francisco Benedetti uh, and, and his team. But then there's others like Planet Watch. I mean, yeah. you want to give an example? Because I think it, like, it blew my mind when you and Dr. McCallie and Sean Ford, the CEO, shared about a platform like Planet Watch and, and yeah. the air sensors. Yeah, it's super fascinating. And all of them are able to see the light. Like, you know, there's old technology in blockchain and there's new technology in blockchain. So all of these use cases, whether they're playing in the sustainability uh, and, and, and working towards those goals or not, which most are, right? But it's the difference between using a diesel engine today and using an electronic vehicle. It's, that's the same difference of using legacy blockchain versus modern, clean infrastructure to run your business, to run your network. And so climate trade is a great example. We have, there's a couple other carbon marketplaces that have popped up. Fran's obviously ahead of the curve when it comes to that. He was the first mover out there. Uh, Planet Watch is a company that's doing air quality tracking, air quality sensors. They've got these little sensors that go all over. They've got partnerships with City, City of Miami included, throughout Europe. They're the first spin-off out of CERN, out of Switzerland. And they've got these sensors that track air quality and they're putting them back on the blockchain. So if you have an air sensor and you're contributing to that data set, you're rewarded by seeing the data from it. And it's all done on chain. That's how that value is transferred, the value being the data. And it's all done. On, and, and they're able to do that on Algorand, one, because it's sustainable and green and they have to partner with someone that's not harmful for the environment when it comes to the tech and the infrastructure. And two, they're able to do that because their transaction fees are negligible. And when you're doing that many transactions, when you're looking at air quality, trying to see if the fires are impacting certain cities, um, trying to see what sort of pollution, engaging and measuring those long term and seeing how it's impacting citizens, you have to, that's a lot of data. When you're doing that much data, you have to have low transaction fees, you have to be environmentally friendly and low energy. What I love about that example, and I'm going to get personal for a second, I'm from uh, South America, I'm from Guyana, and uh, I think about uh, the village where my dad grew up and where I still have cousins, and when they're burning sugar cane, mm -hmm. how the air quality goes all the way down, um, and some of the other exhausts. And um, I love it because it means that the next generation of climate activists uh, all around the planet, as they're trying to drive the common good, have the ability to leverage a green blockchain technology like Algorand. And I think that that's what the future is going to look like. We obviously need climate activism in lots of different ways, but the fact that Algorand has that presence of mind in how you're building on chain um, and, the, uh, and the other folks who are leveraging uh, the Algorand blockchain you share a little bit more insight on how uh, Latin America happens to be a geography that Algorand is paying a lot of attention to. And our friends that are here for Premios Verde, obviously we have friends from all over the world, but also we have a large number of founders and funders and social activist leaders. What are some of the things Algorand's doing down in Latin America? Yeah, Latin America, I think the innovators in Latin America, the governments even in Latin America are really ahead of the curve with doing some things that um, other parts of the country, other parts of the world are not moving as quickly on. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to our partner Koi Banks. Uh, Koi Banks has been a great partner in leading the charge for what's possible for building with blockchain. They're focused on building out uh, different projects, different initiatives. Some of the things that they've done down there include, uh, you know, the backbone of El Salvador's uh, blockchain record keeping. Um, uh, Colombia and Peru are both doing um, COVID vaccination passports that are all verified on chain. That data is all decentralized, it's transparent, it's verified, it's immutable. Um, and then we have a number of different, uh, you know, and there's other, Panama's doing some healthcare payments. Uh, Bermuda, I know not Latin America, but Bermuda and Panama have both really set the bar in the payments and remittances space. So they've taken, you know, I think the, the thing is that my point is that the uh, governments in Latin America have really started dipping their toes in the water with blockchain where other governments aren't. And it's small, right? Like, you know, Bermuda and Panama, Bermuda is the one I know the numbers on, but they've taken $800 million of healthcare payments that goes through the government, 
the insurance companies, the hospitals, uh, the customers, obviously the patients, and they've taken all of that and put it all on chain because it's faster, better, cheaper, right? It's, and, and that's what it comes down to. And so I think it's really interesting to see the governments in Latin America uh, sort of dip their toes in the water and start to do real things that have real impact. Um, and I hope we see more of that ar around the world. And that, that matters because that starts to filter down to, uh, that starts to filter down to uh, what is possible in the innovator space in those countries. And we see that through innovations and startups and people that are really driving what's possible with blockchain. Uh, a couple examples include uh, why Ru is doing, I'm pronouncing it wrong, I'm sure, uh, they're doing um, internet service. So the same way that your family burning sugarcane could have an air quality sensor, their own, they're participating in that economic model. They're participating in giving data back and getting something in return. You've got this group in, in Latin America that's doing uh, internet, so if you're gonna give some of your internet wireless to other participants to use it, you get rewarded for doing that, right? You're no longer going through the same third parties that you used to and you're bringing access to more people. Air quality, you're bringing access to more people and letting more people participate in that economic model, that business model. Um, so I think it's really exciting to see what's happening in Latin America. Uh, you know, everyone here is going to be, like blockchain, has the potential to disrupt any industry, no matter what you're in. So everyone sitting in this room, it's gonna to touch at some point, even if it's as simple as being able to take payments on chain instead of going through a third party. You know, there's a lot of payments happening in, in Latin America. Be Next is doing hundreds of millions of dollars in remittances between Spain, Mexico, and other Spanish-speaking countries. And that's just, pay that's just to avoid Western Union. And it's really impactful for families that are in these locations, families that are abroad in other countries, and it removes friction and it puts value back in the hands of people that need it most. Um, so I think it's, it's gonna be great. I know that some of you, many of you will be standing up here on stage uh, the next time we do this, talking about how you've leveraged blockchain to, to, create, um, to you know, create more value for people that participate in your business model. And you know, with, whether, you know, we can talk all day about adoption and use cases, there's, you know, lots going on in the gaming space, there's lots going on in uh, the creator economy, whether that's on the art side or the music side, where you've got totally different models. The music's a good one, the music's one that everyone, I think, can wrap their heads around. Uh, there's a company called Stoey, the song that owns itself, where uh, South by Southwest was a couple weeks ago, as an example. Uh, Ryan McDaniel, McDaniels, who's, the, who's DMC of Run DMC, launched a new track. Uh, he launched that new track, not through a record label, but through a Stoey, and 700 people, 700 fans, now own part of that song, which any future rights, royalties, and revenue get filtered right through a smart contract to those fans. So you've got an artist, and you've got a big group of fans directly connected, right? So you're, you're, it's a totally different economic model where fans are participating. Same thing with sugarcane smoke that's coming up from the air yeah. quality. Same thing with, uh, what was the other example we had? Um, the internet services, right? But you can tell how this has started to disrupting things. And, you know, uh, the government's ahead in Latin America. Certain people are starting to make moves here in the U.S. Uh, Shrina's running for Congress um, out in California. She is launching green NFTs on Algorand. She was with us last night as part of campaign merchandise, and that's how she's doing fundraising for her campaign. And so it's, it's, it's great to see, it's super exciting. That is really powerful. Um, I think my, my daughter and her friends might wanna get a Stoey with maybe Maluma on the next one. Love it, um, love uh, that. So we have, to, we have to figure that out. But um, you know, in, in Web3, oftentimes you see this hashtag, uh, wag me, uh, we're all gonna make it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say something really cheesy, but it's this Friday, so that's, but this I think that <laughs> if you think about it, what we're doing here, I think that Algorand is putting the N in nosotros, the idea that blockchain is about us, that it is a democratizing movement. It does not have to be about uh, simply the concentration of resources or sort of the, the decimation of environment. It actually can be about driving the common good. And I wanna kind of bring that back to where we are today in Premios Verde and the fact that, you know, it's, it's unconventional for a crypto company to say uh, there, there were a lot of things that are happening over Miami Tech Month, which Al Graham yeah. is the, the sponsor of Miami Tech Month. Um, yeah. Not a lot of your peers would ever consider 
getting engaged with Premios Verde, even though Premios Verde is exceptional. Why did you all step up and say, we want to be here, we're showing up in this way for a convening like this with the type of social impact leaders and uh, folks that are here? Yeah, you know, uh, channeling my inner Silvio. Now, I've, so I've known Silvio for four years now. I've, I've been with him for a long time. And uh, I am by no means any fill-in for Silvio. But channeling, Silvio would say that we have a moral obligation. Like, that is what technology is for, right? It is to advance what, what's possible. And we want to be here. We have nothing to hide. We have a very carbon-friendly, very uh, low footprint. And we really believe that we're modern infrastructure. We're not a diesel engine. We are like the Tesla and then some, right? And we're, we've, we're going to continue doubling down. You know, it was designed, purpose-built like this from the ground up. We have some of the best minds in cryptography that are part of the Algorand ecosystem that are looking in the future as to what we can do to make things better in the future. The team of cryptographers, the team of, I mean, Chris Piker like wrote the book on lattice cryptography and post-quantum cryptography. And so they're doing these amazing technical uh, evolutions in blockchain, but sustainability is part of how we were built and it will be part of how we function moving forward. So it's always going to be part of it. I, I uh, I really, really appreciate that as someone that uh, thinks deeply about, uh, we think about the city that we're in, Miami, and we heard from our friend, Mayor Suarez, who I had the joy of, uh, of uh, having the opportunity to serve with as his founding advisor for Venture Miami, that um, we know that our world now more than ever needs builders who are leveraging technology to address the, the, the challenges that we're facing in our climate, and Kelly, for those, and I'll, I'll embarrass her for a second, Kelly is relentless. She literally flew to New York, was there for less than 13 hours to see and participate in Al Grant's phenomenal Times Square uh, demo, jumped on a plane at 6 a.m. this morning because she wanted to be here for Premios Verde and, and show up in a meaningful way, and is an exceptional mom as well, but um, I, I also want to highlight that you travel the world and you get to meet and see inspirational builders, people who are building on chain. Mm -hmm. You want to share a story? You want to talk about some of the types of things that you get to see and your colleagues get to see? What's something that really has stood out for you? I think what stood out is how people are recognizing the tipping point that we're at when it comes to tech, when it comes to blockchain. And everyone tries to wrap their head around how to make decisions on moving forward, how to make decisions on building, how, like what to do. I get a lot of, what do I do next? I want to partner with you, but I don't know what to do. You need to tell me what to do. And, and I, I feel that. That's hard, right? It's very new. It's, I live it and breathe it, you know, hours and hours and hours a day, and it's still hard. Blockchain's not easy. It's super hard. And we've come a long way from talking about the nuances of, you know, cryptographic sortition, right? Now it's just, is it better, faster, cheaper? Is it clean? Is it green? Does it work? Does it not fall over? And so I think, you know, I, there's not one anecdotal story. I think for me, it's that what's coming to fruition is people are beginning to wrap their heads around a framework of how to evaluate blockchain, how to make choices, and how to move forward with that. And for me, it's really, there's three points. There's, there's three legs of that stool. Um, and three will keep it from falling over. It's more I like three. that. Uh, the first one is the tech, right? Does the tech work? Is it better, faster, cheaper? Does it work? Does it not break? And is it green? Is it not harming the environment? One, check on that. Two is the ecosystem. Like we're seeing more and more people like really understand and dive in on the component pieces that you need. Is there a DEX? Is there an AMM? Can, you know, um, do you have a plug-in for a payment that's really quick and easy? Like, have people built around the ecosystem so that you can pull in those component pieces? Because you can't just, oh, I'm going to use that blockchain because the tech's good, and then I'm going to do this thing. But it's like, to do that thing, you need all these other things, right? So it's the ecosystem. And then the third and final one is, uh, can I build on it? Is it easy? Is it empowering for builders, whether that's developers or businesses? If you're developers, the tooling there, can I write it? Can I do, use a high-level language that I already understand so I don't have to go get a PhD in blockchain? And I think, and if you're a business person, can I just, can I launch a new asset? Can I do this with ease, again, without having to go and get a PhD in cryptography? And so I think if you look at those framings and all of these people that you're, um, that you, it's super inspirational what people are doing with blockchain today, but I think for me what's most exciting is people recognizing the tipping point and really 
getting their heads around a framing of how to think about moving forward. I think it's going to be, I, once people understand a little bit more, like I think it's just going to take off and it's going to be super exciting to see how it inf is infused throughout any of these economic business models that we're seeing. Well, what I love about uh, what you and everyone at Algorand is doing is that you're taking the time to actually engage community. You're taking the time today, whether it's Premios Verde, whether it's your, uh, your teams here in Miami that are out there every Friday doing algo talks, building ecosystem. I want to give a shout out to Chase, who's part of uh, Kelly, uh, the team at Algorand, who's actually on the ground in Miami, that yep. you all believe that convening uh, individuals in the public square matters so very much. Yep. And uh, do you want to share any final, uh, final insights? I know Dr. McCallie, who was not here, and just so you get it, Dr. McCallie is a winner of the Turing Prize, which is like the Nobel Prize in computing. Where, what do you see uh, being some of the most important uh, focus areas for Algorand over the remainder of this year and going into next year? What, what are some of the big things that uh, you all are looking for? I know ecosystem is probably the most important. Yeah, and I think it's really like tapping in and becoming part of the communities that are willing to embrace blockchain. You know, Miami is very different than other cities that I've been in recently this week. Yes. Uh, and so just being in places and supporting those communities with whatever they need, if they need resources, if they need education, if they need to understand the tech better, Different parts of Latin America fall under that umbrella. Like I think for us, it's about being there for the community. We're open source technology; anyone can go and use it. And so for us, it's really enabling people to, um, you know, grasp that change that they want to see in the world and, and let blockchain empower that. Friends, let's give a big round of applause for Kelly. Thank Callahan, you, Sai. Thank you, Premios team. This was fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. You. Well, thank you so much, Kelly and Saif, for that conversation. Very, very enlightening. And I'd like to open the floor if somebody has a question for either Kelly or Saif. Let's see over here. Hi, Kelly. Uh, nice to meet you. Thank you very much for your talk. Uh, in, in Chile, it's not a big deal, blockchain. Uh, but for all of us, I think it's very important. Uh, all the day, we are... Uh, uh, listen about the, the importance of the climate tech and everything. But many of us, uh, we are searching for investors. So the, the, the question is straight away. Algorand, do invest in green projects? Sorry. <laughs> That's a great question. I'm glad you brought it up, and I should have addressed this. Uh, there are an abundant uh, number of opportunities for funding within the Algorand ecosystem. So. We've got a number of investors that have committed to putting large funds into the Algorand ecosystem. I can count today a little over $2 billion across a different assortment of funds that want to specifically fund projects that are built on Algorand. You know, it includes the Borderless Capital team here in Miami, the Arrington Capital Group, Arrington XRP Investment Group here in Miami. Uh, those, like, those two come to mind just because they're Miami-based, so I know they're, they're probably more tapped into the Latin American community. Uh, Skybridge and the SALT team have a fund. HiveMind has a fund. So there's a number of different funds across Algorand that are looking for innovators and startups. Um, you know, uh, I believe that they're all on our ecosystem directory, so ecosystem.algorand.com, where you can kind of find some of these funds and reach out and, and do some pitching. But we'll be doing more with the Premios team to sort of get um, anyone here, anyone part of the Premios group, into uh, introductions into those. We're, we want to do more, and we want to tie into those and bring those people to you and bring you to those people, too. Great. One more question over here. Hi. Um, right now, you know that uh, there's a big problem with all the gas fees uh, on Ethereum, and but uh, most of the people that are involved in crypto have to start with uh, the Ethereum chain because it's the most known chain. And no, you don't. No, no, I know. No. <laughs> You're right. That that's where I'm going with the question. Um, and most of the tokens are ERC20 tokens, and NFTs are built on Ethereum. And, but there's a big problem with the gas fees, and mm -hmm. proof of stake solves that, right? And uh, especially if it's uh, 
carbon negative like algorand. So my question is, how do you see the algorand blockchain in the future uh, interacting with uh, more people and uh, making it more massive, like yeah. it would be the Ethereum network right now, but in five years or in two years, or in one year, the algorand yeah. blockchain with all those NFTs and, and well, no ERC-20s, but BRC-20s. Yeah, so uh, you brought up a couple of things, so I'm going to try and dissect that a little <laughs> bit. Because uh, we could talk about any of those things for a while. Um, so first of all, the, you know, the comment about you having to build on Ethereum versus anything else, uh, the same way you would write in Solidity and deploy on the EVM with an ERC-20 token, same mental model for Algorand. You would write in Teal, which is a transaction language that's a little more complicated and you will let you do more complex stuff. You don't have to do that, or you can write in Reach, which is a high-level JavaScript-like language. So same thing, write it in one of those two languages, you get options, deploy it on the Algorand virtual machine with an ASA, which is an Algorand standard asset, same thing to uh, an ERC-20. So the mental model's the same. It's just a matter of picking that from the get-go. And then you brought up sort of the community within Ethereum. Ethereum's been around for a while, and Ethereum definitely has its own sort of uh, uh, siloed ecosystem, if you will. Uh, they are definitely experiencing some challenges from uh, transaction fees. You know, the example I like is CI is one of the oldest copyright clearance houses in the US. They minted and distributed 4.5 million NFTs over a couple of hours because they could afford to do so. It would cost something like $260 million to do that on, on Ethereum. It cost them something like two grand on Algorand. I probably have the numbers wrong, but you get the idea. And so the uh, transaction fees aren't gonna go up, right? They're very, very minuscule, they're minor. And I think when we look forward, when we look forward in terms of growing the community, first of all, there's a massive, uh, uh, Chase, I don't know if you have the numbers, but there are tens of millions of numbers of, of non-fungible tokens that are on chain already on Algorand and growing every day. Some that are very green, the Algoanas, I gotta give a shout out to that group. Those things are going for a minimum of about $20,000 <laughs> and they plant trees every time they, I think they're up to planting 60,000 60, trees across Australia. So that NFT community, that token community, the ecosystem is absolutely growing, but it's not just those people that have assets on chain, it's also all of the other pieces, right? What's the liquidity? What are the DEXs? What are those other things? And then the other part of it is there's a number of different bridges coming up because people are tapping into those communities and what they are, whether it's the NFT or the liquidity on those other chains, those other communities, and they want to move over to Algorand and use a better, faster, cheaper, stable network and be able to go across. So we're gonna, you know, we don't believe that there's just one chain. We don't believe that, you know, it's only gonna be Algorand that's underpinning all of these things. It's gonna be a multi-chain world. And so there's a number of initiatives to do uh, bridges to some of these other ecosystems. And I think there's some good announcements coming up in, the, in a couple of weeks. I know a few people that are working on different uh, projects. The foundation has provided some grants for some London Bridge work. Um, there's some other things coming up that I think will be really instrumental in providing those bridges so people can tap into those ecosystems but still use a stable, strong, environmentally friendly uh, blockchain. Here's hoping. <laughs> that, no, I'm not. I'm not working on that. Like people are people in the ecosystem. I'm aware of are, are trying to make are trying to do some great things there. Yeah. Yeah. It's for the translation. Oh. It's for the translation. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so it's not gonna be the bridges that you think of today when there's a third party network of validators validating transactions from chain to chain. We, we've come up with something called state proofs, which essentially allows you to validate state on one chain and then send, send transactions or mint and burn transactions to another chain without a third party validator network. So th there's some really cool novel technology that Algorand is coming up with that's open source to the entire world to use as well. So it's not just for us. Yeah, that's, Chase, that's a great ad, and I know that we have a strong team down in Argentina that's super excited about taking those things and doing, you know, explosive things with them. All right, please ask that the all around people who are still in the way of their hands get to the mic. <laughs> we got a couple in the back, Juliana and Andrew in the back. Chase is right behind you, and I'll be around for a bit. <laughs>
Okay, so that was a very technical question and a very technical answer. And maybe some of us that are here in the audience did not really understand much of what Kelly said. But the good thing is that we're going to have a workshop today by Algorand uh, directed towards all of our projects um, at 3 p.m., so don't miss that, okay? So that we can understand how to incorporate blockchain into our businesses. Yeah, so, that's a great deeper dive and a great place to ask a bunch of deeper questions too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so don't miss that. 3 p.m. by Algorand. Okay? Thank you. So we have come to the end of this.